Hello, everybody. Now, before we run through the information on managing debt today, I think it's really important to highlight that having debt or credit can be a really normal part of managing our finances. You know, it might be that we've had student finance to go to university, or we've got a mortgage um, on our house, or we've used finance for things like cars or phones. And all of these are investments in our future and borrowing money for these things can just make it easier to manage financially. So debt and credit doesn't have to be a bad thing as long as it's used sensibly and you can afford to make those repayments every month. However, debt does become a bad thing if you rack up debt for things you don't need, like luxury holidays or, or items that you only you want, you don't necessarily need or you're just spending more than you're earning each month and you start to feel that stress and anxiety as debt mounts up. And we know from experience that people at any age or salary or situation can get into the problem of having debt. Now, fortunately, we'll see today that no money problems are unsolvable and we'll be looking at a debt action plan to get ourselves back on track. And that's gonna involve understanding how we prioritize debt, putting together your budget, reducing your outgoings, maximizing income, and really looking at how we can reduce the overall cost of that debt and where to go for debt help and further support. But I wanted to, first of all, touch on the reasons why debt can become a problem. Now, according to the money charity at the end of last year, the average debt per adult in the UK was £5,000. And that was excluding mortgages. And of that £5,000, about £1,000 is on credit cards or store cards and the rest on loans and overdrafts. And that kind of pay now uh, by later type credit. Now, typically, one in five people will put Christmas spending on credit cards, which they then battle to pay off throughout the year. And 42% of people use that buy now, pay later facility and then have to borrow money from elsewhere to make the repayments once they've kicked in. Now, the average family at the moment is spending about two and a half thousand pounds a year on utility bills. So that's about six pounds eighty five a day. And that's likely to be double that if you live in a four bedroom house. And in times of trouble or increased costs, 28% of families report to have no savings to use, and only 3% of families believe that they've got sufficient savings to cope with whatever life's going to throw at them. Now, if you're somebody with a family, apparently the average couple will spend £24.44 a day to raise a child. That equates to just over £160,000 for one child up to the age of 18. So that just adds to that financial pressure. And last by no means least on this slide, we can see that 28% of people have got low confidence when managing their money you know, and don't know how to manage that debt if they get into it. And that's really what I'm hoping to change in this session, to give you the tools and the knowledge to tackle any debt if you have it and to take back that control. So here's the plan we're going to follow. We're going to run through each step in turn and we'll start with uh, step one, prioritising your debt. Now, in order to do this, you need to write it down. Any money that you owe, because that's the first step of taking control and working out that plan of what to do. So you could use a list like I've shown on the slide, which shows who and what you owe, the minimum payment that you have to pay each month, what that interest rate is and when you need to pay it by. Now, that interest rate or annual percentage rate, also known as the APR, is the interest you'll pay if you've got a balance outstanding on something like a credit card or a loan. And the higher that APR figure, the more interest you're paying and the longer it's likely to be to pay it off. Now, you should be able to find a note of that APR, or that interest figure on a recent statement or a credit agreement when you signed up. Now, once you've made your list, then you need to determine, is that debt a priority or a non-priority debt? So what's the difference? Well, priority debts are the ones that are carrying the most serious consequences if you don't pay them. So things like mortgage and rent bills, because having a secure place to live with heating and light is essential to your everyday living. Non-priority debts are those debts that could face less serious consequences if you didn't pay them on time. Things like overdrafts, loans, credit and store cards, or money that you've borrowed from friends and family. Now, you're not going to be popular if you don't pay those, and you may pay more interest if you're late in that payment, and your credit history will suffer, but you wouldn't lose an essential part of your life if you didn't pay it straight away. 
So rearranging your outstanding debt list with priority and high interest rate debt at the top is the way to go, as these are the ones that you want to concentrate on paying off first um, in full. Then point two of the plan is to work out your budget. And that just means getting a handle on what money have you got coming in every month versus what you're spending. And to help you to do this, you could use one of the budget planners that we've got available on the Best With Money website. You'll find it under the employer resources section um, and that's free to use. But you should also see, is my banking app offering any facilities as well? Because they're getting far better at providing those budgeting type facilities. Now, when you complete your budget, try and note down everything that you spend on a month, including all of those impulse purchases. And I find the best way to do that is to look back over my last couple of months bank statements, but also those credit card statements as well, just to make sure you're, you're putting on that budget all of those extras that you may have forgotten about because you want the true cost of life. Always try and remember as well those one-off spends, things like car services or festivities. So if you know that your car service, your MOT and your tax is going to cost you, let's say, £600 across the year, divide that by 12, which is £50, and add that onto your monthly budget. Because by breaking down annual costs into monthly figures is going to help you to really see what you've got left at the end of each month in order to pay off that debt. Once you've got your budget, step three on the debt action plan is to see if you've got any monthly costs that you can reduce because you want to try and free up money to pay off those debts more quickly. So look at any non-essential items, first of all, to see if you can cancel them. You know, it might be that you've got multiple subscriptions to music or TV sites where actually just one would do. Or maybe you've got that gym membership that you started in January that you're never using. I try and look at my direct debits and standing orders about twice a year. And I have to say, I normally find something that I can cancel to save money. Once you've done the non-essentials, then work through your bills to see if you can get a better deal. Um, I mean, personally, I find using the comparison website, something like Money Supermarket is really helpful because you can run through uh, the application form. You can find the best price that you could get from another provider for that insurance or service. And then you can contact your existing one to say, I've got a better price elsewhere. Will you match it? And nine times out of 10, they will. But only if you if you get those rates first, they're not given automatically. The other tip there is take off any auto renew on insurances, because then that makes sure that the insurers can't increase that price without you realizing as well. Another thing to check in terms of monthly costs is your council tax, because often this is one of our larger bills that we have to pay each month. So are you in the right council tax band or are you paying too much? There is a website that you can go to to check that. And if you find that your council tax band is too high compared with similar houses in your area, you can appeal it to see if you can get it reduced just by going onto that website. And remember, you can also get reductions on council tax if you're getting universal credit or if somebody in your house has got an illness such as dementia or Alzheimer's. And lastly, many when it comes to council tax, many councils are going to allow you to spread payments over 12 months rather than the usual 10 if you ask them to. Because, again, that's going to have the effect of reducing those monthly payments slightly to free up more money to pay off towards the debt. Now, if you are in that situation at the moment where your energy bills are in arrears and you're struggling to pay them, many of the energy suppliers have set up charitable trusts that are providing additional grants to help those in need at the moment. So I've put those companies who are offering that support on the right hand side of the slide. And you don't necessarily have to be their customer in order to qualify for the grant. Um, in particular, the British Gas Energy Trust has got grants available for all. So it is worth contacting them to see if you qualify. And lastly, of course, on this slide, don't forget any discounts available to you, either through work or through things like supermarket reward schemes, because every penny that you can save is another penny towards paying off that outstanding debt. Now, step four of the action plan is to maximise income where possible. Firstly, check, are there any state benefits that you're entitled to? The main one is universal credit, which is designed to help people with living costs, particularly if you're on a low income 
and you've got less uh, than £16,000 in savings. Now, the quickest and easiest way to find out which state benefits you might be entitled to is to go to that website, the Entitled To website. If you fill in their questionnaire about your personal circumstances, it took me about 10 minutes when I did mine. It will then tell you if there are any state benefits that you're eligible for. If you are, then you go to the gov.uk website and you apply there online. It's also worth seeing if you're eligible for any charitable grants for people in financial difficulty. Now, obviously, the first place here for you guys to look is the ICE Ben Fund or IMECI, uh, because they may have financial grants that are available. Um, but in addition, you know, after looking at that, you can also check the Turn to Us website. That's got a grant checker and that searches over 1,700 available charitable grants throughout the country. And that will take you less than five minutes to do. Point three here, of course, just take some time to see if you've got any unwanted items that you can sell. That can be hugely profitable because anything you sell, again, that's more money towards that debt. Um, an article I read very recently suggested we've all got at least a £1,000 worth of stuff in our home. Um, and there are plenty of apps now and websites that are designed to help us to sell that stuff. So Nextdoor, Depop, eBay, there's Vinted. Um, that's just a few uh, that you could start with to see if you can find some money uh, from the things that you've got that you don't need. And lastly, on the slide here, do check out Rent a Room Scheme. That allows you to rent out furnished accommodation in your home and you are able to earn up to seven and a half thousand pounds a year and not pay any tax on that income. So just another way of getting more income in if you need it. OK, so by doing steps one to four, the aim is that you're going to have managed to reduce some of your outgoings or increased your income to free up some money to pay towards those debts. So at that point, this is where you need to go back to that list of your debts that you did in step one and use any of that additional money that you freed up to start paying off your priority and high interest uh, debts first. So I just want to demonstrate here while paying anything above a minimum payment um, on, let's say, a credit card or a loan is beneficial. So let's take a look at the example on the screen. So here I've used the debt calculator tool, which you'll find on our website under the employee resources section, and you're free to use this as well. So what this shows, if I had a credit card with a £2,000 balance uh, that was outstanding, and I'd started paying interest on that of 20%. Um, if I was only paying the minimum payment that they were asking of me, which is that £40 a month, it's going to take me eight years to pay it off. However, if you look at that line at the bottom, which is underlined in pink, if I take that monthly payment up to £48, so just £8 more a month, I'm going to pay that card off 18 months more quickly and I'm going to save myself over £600 in interest. So as you can see, paying over the minimum is a really good strategy if you can do it. But do remember, if you're paying slightly more off on those priority and high interest debts, you must pay at least the minimum on all of your outstanding debts to avoid falling behind. Because if you do miss payments, that is going to be noted on your credit history. It can affect your credit score. So really setting up things like direct debits for debt payments can be a really good way of avoiding those missing payments. And then the last step of the debt action plan is to look to see if you can reduce or consolidate debt to bring down the interest payments that you're making. So the first point here, looking at that example at the top right hand side of the screen, is to use any savings that you have to pay off debt. And at the moment, while savings interest rates are still pretty low, you know, the typical rate is around 3% at the moment, it's almost guaranteed that the interest you're going to be paying on your debt is going to be far more than what you're earning on savings. So, for example, you're probably paying 40% on any overdrafts that you've got, at least 20% on store and credit cards. You may be even paying as high as 12% interest on any car loans. So if you have got savings, using that to pay off those high interest debts and then use it saving again to build up the savings is the way to go. However, we know that most people who are struggling with debt don't have savings. So what can you do instead? 
Well, let's see if you can bring your debt together under one loan or one card in order to try and bring down those interest payments. Because the lower the interest rate on that card or that loan, the more the money that you're paying off is going to be paying off the actual debt rather than just paying the interest that's accruing. So the easiest way to look at if you can consolidate your debt is to go to an online card or loan eligibility checker, complete the details, and it will throw out which offers you, you're entitled to based on your circumstances. Um, and I really do find the eligibility checkers on the Money Saving Expert website to be the best. And I've put those uh, web addresses at the bottom there. Now, for anybody that's got um, good to, to an excellent credit score and your total debt is under £5,000, a 0% balance transfer card might come out the best route for you. So this is where you transfer any existing debts you've got to that balance transfer card. You'll pay a small upfront fee for doing so. Most of the cards uh, normally charge you about up to 5% of the debt that you're transferring. Sometimes they've got special offers and you can get 0%. Then once that debt is moved over, you pay no interest on that for a set period of time. And the better your credit score, the more likely you are to get one of those balance transfer cards and the longer that interest free period is likely to be. Now the golden rules of balance transfers and never to miss a monthly payment, try to pay off that balance before that 0% period has finished and don't withdraw cash on the card just because normally that isn't at the cheap rate. That will be at like a, the, the normal 20% rate or so on. But when used correctly, those balance transfer facilities really can be one of the cheapest ways of borrowing. Alternatively, if your total debt is more than £5,000, you could be better off going for a cheap long uh, term loan. And the reason for that is you don't have that upfront fee to pay for moving the debt across. And at the moment, I looked this morning, interest rates for £5,000 loans are starting at around the 5% interest rate mark uh, for those with a good credit score. And remember, you know, the lower that interest rate that you can get on any new card or loan, the cheaper it's gonna be for you to pay it off, which might even mean you can then pay it off a little bit more quickly. So that's the summary then of the action plan that you can follow to get yourself to be debt free. So to write down what you owe, prioritize those debts, work out your budget and see if there's anywhere that you can start to reduce those monthly costs. But don't forget, are there any other opportunities to maximize income as well? Things like state benefits or selling unwanted things in your house. But as you're going through, always remember if you can consolidate debt by using low interest credit cards or loans, um, that is all going to help you to pay that debt off more quickly. However, you know, we do appreciate that sometimes financial situations can just feel too bad um, to be able to work out yourself. You know, it might be that you're in that situation that even after following that plan we've just gone through, you can't afford the minimum debt repayments. Or you might be receiving letters that are threatening bailiffs or court action. Or maybe your credit score is low and you don't just don't have those debt consolidation options available to you and that debt is starting to mount up. So if you're in any of those situations or you're just not feeling mentally or emotionally strong enough to get to grips with your debt, then it is time to reach out and get some help. Now, the first place you can turn is to either the ICE BEM Fund or Support Network, depending on where you're a member. The ICE BEM Fund has got a 24 hour support line um, and that's for you and your family members. Um, and they can give you free and practical and tailor made advice just on how to manage your debt and your finances. And they can point you in the right direction. They may even have some financial grants that you're, you're eligible for. Support net Network works very closely with PayPlan, who can offer you and your family fun uh, confidential debt and budgeting advice and solutions. You know, and they really, and it isn't just debt um, management that they can help with. They offer lots and lots of fantastic support. So please do get in touch with them, no matter how big or small you think your problem is. If for any reason you don't want to approach the funds or you want to look elsewhere, then I would definitely recommend instead that you contact one of the other non-profit debt counselling type organisations. One shown here like Step Change, Citizens Advice, National Debt Line. 
all of these charities have got qualified debt advisors whose job it is to help you, not to make money out of you, and they're going to provide their services for free. What I would say is please don't be tempted to respond to companies who advertise um, a debt solution, either on the radio or on TV or in the newspaper, because I, I mean, I was uh, in the car for just 15 minutes earlier and I heard three adverts about getting an IVA or getting a debt solution. And the likelihood is that they're just trying to sell you a product that's going to make them money rather than thinking about what is the action plan that's going to be in your best interests. Whereas if you go to one of these debt counsellors, they will absolutely be looking um, at the best thing for you. So let's bring it all together then. We've covered a lot of information in a short space of time. So what I've done here is I've really just brought together all those tips and pointers into one slide so you can go back and just go through and tick them off one by one to see if you can get back on track. But the most important message today is that if you do need help, please don't be afraid to ask for it. 80% of people who sought debt advice and went to a debt counsellor felt happier after doing so and felt more able to cope. You know, and previously they may have felt, you know, a massive weight on their shoulders and just not knowing where to go to. OK, Sarah, that's the end of um, my slides. Really happy to take some questions if you've had them. Amazing. Thank you. Some great content there. And um, we absolutely have had a couple of questions come in. So first of all, with regarding to debt repayments, is there a typical formula that suggests a sweet spot for affordable increased payments with good reductions on interests on debts? Yeah, it is going to differ um, loan by loan, definitely, or credit card by credit card. It's going to depend on the interest rate um, and your own personal circumstances at all. So I would definitely recommend that you go onto our website, Better With Money. If you go to Employee Resources, if you go to that debt calculator tool that I demonstrated, you can change all the parameters, like how much you owe, what interest rate you're paying on that, the time take, you know, if it's a loan, how long it's over. And it will do pretty much do that calculation for you. And you can start to play around and say, right, what if I pay five pounds more? Um, you know, how how much uh, shorter is it going to be for me to pay off a debt? What if I decide to pay £10 more? So really, you know, you've got that tool at your disposal and I'd absolutely recommend um, that you have a play around with that to find that sweet spot for you. That's great. Thank you. And the next question, could a 0% transfer credit card be used to pay off a loan? Um, yeah, absolutely. It can. Um, the, the one thing that I would look at, though, with some loans is whether you've got any early redemption penalties. So often when you take out a loan, you agree to pay it back over two years, five years. Um, lots of loans now don't have those early redemption penalties, but some of them will charge you extra interest if you're paying it off early. So just double check that before you would then move that over um, onto a 0%. But, you know, if the outstanding balance is less than £5,000, it could be a good way to go. Um, but as I say, do check the uh, card eligibility checker on the money saving expert first. Please don't just pick just because let's say I'm, I'm, I'll give you an example. Just because I, I bank with Barclays doesn't necessarily mean that I would be approved for their 0% balance transfer card. It's really important to do that eligibility checker first just to make sure you'll be approved. That's great. Thank you. And the next one. What is the best way of using a snowball payment system of credit cards? OK, so what I understand by this is where actually you pay off the smallest debt first, because then that makes you feel more in control. So let's say you had four credit cards, one had £100 on, one had 1000 thousand, one had 2000 If you pay one off emotionally, that makes you feel better because you've only now got three debts left rather than four. However, what I would say from a financial perspective and being financially savvy, um, you should always prioritise your debt based on the highest interest rates and priority first, um, because that's the one by doing that, it means that you're going to have less to pay back. If you go down the just paying off the smallest debt, if it's not necessarily the one with the largest uh, interest rate, you could end up overall paying more, paying for longer. Um, so personally, um, I wouldn't use uh, that. I would be using the priority as we spoke about um, on step one of the plan. 
That's great. Thank you. And just one more while we have you. How long does it take to improve credit rating once you're out of debt? Yeah, so this is going to depend. I mean, if you've had any missed payments on credit cards or loans, um, that will go on to your credit file and that marker will stay on there for six years. Similarly, if you do end up going to somebody like a debt counsellor and um, getting them to arrange a debt consolidation option for you, like a debt management plan or an IVA, um, again, that information will stay in your credit file for up to six years following your very last payment. And what you'll find is once that disappears off your credit file, then your credit score will go up. So potentially up to six years. However, if you're doing all the right things, even if you have been in debt and you start to do the right things and you're always paying at least the minimum and you start to get your debts paid off, um, even if you have had something like a debt management plan or an IVA, you will see within six months of finishing that, that your score will start to increase. Um, but it is, you know, the main point here is anything you do, any missed payments that you have, any extra credit that you take out will be going onto your credit reference file and it will stay there for six years.